Welcome back. So hopefully I can save you guys a little bit of money with this video. We all know that we want to uh, be in this hobby and not spend a ton of money and do this as efficiently as we can. And unfortunately, we all know that uh, the economy sucks and gas and coal and oil are on the rise. So that basically means your bill for the wintertime will be higher than what we would like. So I am poor. I'm in debt up to my head. And I don't have a lot of fancy stuff, so I don't have a barn or a warehouse or anything like that. This is my bedroom connected to my house. So I actually kicked myself out of the main room, put all my snakes in the main room. So it's a little bit more difficult for me to heat the snakes and do a cost effective. But I found a couple of ways that have saved me a couple of dollars and I'm going to share that with you guys. Um, so I'm in Ohio. So if you're in the quarter regions, hopefully this helps you. It gets normally around negative five to in the thirties for the next couple of months. Nor I not keep my room, or I mean, sorry, keep the house at like 66, 68 degrees, which is not terrible, but obviously they can't, or the snakes cannot live in those temperatures. So I like to keep the snake room about 85 degrees, and I'll show you guys how I do that. I do now keep most of my snakes in rack systems, which I know there's a lot of anti rack people out there, and that's fine. I totally understand that. I'm not here for that debate or that argument. I do also keep them in big tubs. Some of you guys have been wondering how I heat them and they have no heating in them at all, except for that big one down there. And I'll explain why, but I really like the rack systems. Not only is it cost effective for the snakes, it's cost effective for uh, the bills, the heating and, and energy and stuff like that. So one of the things that I do like about this is each individual row has heat panels on it and they're very nice. They do pretty well on keeping the same temperature all across the board, which I've noticed, which is phenomenal. And then I do have it connected to a thermostat. You guys can choose whatever thermostat you want. I just like this one because it has two different probes on it and two different settings. So on the big racks, since hot air rises and it kind of messes with the temperatures in here, I like to have one probe on one channel, split it in half. And on the top half, I have one probe in one channel on another channel up here. You can do it however you want. That's just the way uh, I've been told is a good way to do it. And uh, it, it's been working out for me. Another way is, and that's cost effective, is the big cage down below has radiant heat panels. So radiant heat panels are phenomenal. I think it's 100 watt or 120 watt. I have another 80 watt on there. I've noticed since it's on the ground, since it gets very cold, the ground gets cold. So then it pushes the coldness into the cage and the radiant heat panels have helped. I've noticed that's a huge reduction on the billing because it doesn't take a lot of energy to use that. Once it's up to heat, it stays there. And depending on how you use your thermostat, it, you can keep it there or you can have it uh, drop down to a couple degrees and turn off and then turn back on. It really depends on how you want to have it set up. But the main way that I do set this up is, you know, and another thing is that it's cost effective. I get it. People like tanks. And if you have a ton of light bulbs and a bunch of heating bulbs, that's going to kill your, your energy bill. So the biggest thing that I have found that has been super cost effective is a basic oil heater. Now this oil heater, sometimes it's, it's, you know, this is pretty old. It's not fancy. It has turned dials. It's not electronic. Sometimes I'll run two of these in the room on the low setting just because there's different spots in the room. This house is pretty old and it's not that great on ceiling uh, for, for winter. It's good, but I mean, also I bet if I had my house in the seventies, it'd be fine, but I don't like a high energy bill. And since I work outside, I, 66 degrees is like summertime for me right now. So anyways, um, I run this 24 seven all year round, even in the summertime, because I do run the AC and it gets cold in here. So I have to have the heat on in the room as well. So this is definitely getting a lot of use out of it. I've not had any issues, although every two to three years I will buy a new one. I probably don't have to, but I will because it makes me sleep better at night knowing that it's a brand new unit, brand new oil is in here and it's not being consistently ran. Therefore, in my mind, it might not catch on fire. <laughs> that's just the way I see it. That's probably not how it works, but that's how my brain processes. So 
it's not on high yet and we can see right here at the highest point it's 80 degrees in here right now which i think is perfectly fine if i just turn this up one notch it can go all the way up to 85 ish which is good now if this is running constantly and it dips down below 75 degrees in here i will add a second one which i've noticed and then i'll turn this down and then i'll i'll adjust the both of them to where it's good even running two of them i've noticed my my bill is not a lot Obviously, I'm not going to say prices because it's different where you live in the county, city, or states. But, you know, from summertime to wintertime, I really don't notice that big of a difference. Now, I do run this directly into the wall. This does have a built-in thermostat. You can always run an external thermostat if that makes you feel better. I have seen both setups catch on fire. So there's really not a fail safe on that. Unfortunately, anytime you're introducing different heating elements that are run constantly, that are you know mass produced, there's always the chance that you can, it'll catch on fire, which sucks. Now I know you can do custom stuff, which may work better, but obviously that's gonna, it just depends. You wanna spend more on that. I've seen custom uh, rating heat panels that are very expensive. You know, I, I don't know. So I've never heard of a radio heat panel catch on fire. The basic ones from Reptile Basics. Um, but it again, every time you introduce an, an extra heating element, you do run that risk. So I've seen thermostats fail. I've seen them stop working. And then these will shoot up to however hot they can get. And then they cook the animals and they cook the tubs. So be aware, check your stuff constantly. I check all my stuff at least once a week. I check the wires, I check the connections, I check the heat panels to make sure there's no panel that's significantly hotter than the other one. And then I check the thermostat and obviously I check the oil cooler uh, to make sure nothing drastic is happening that could kill your snakes. So that's just kind of how I do it. And it's been working for me. And when my bills from the summertime, when, you know, depending, but summer to winter, I've noticed that there's really only like, a $50 difference instead of the hundreds of dollars, which I'm noticing from some from some people um, that run light bulbs and heat bulbs and all this other stuff with all their animals. It's kind of like, well, maybe it is oil here, but again, I don't have that big of a room, so that brings it uh, some stuff into effect. But I'm seeing a lot more people go to the oil heaters. It's much safer than the regular traditional coil heaters, and it's much safer. So somebody asked me how I run it, if I feel comfortable with the oil heater. I work 12 hours a day. I'm gone more than that. And I've gone on vacations at a week at a time, left the oil heaters on, no problems at all. So not saying something can't happen. I'm saying it has not happened. I'm gonna keep on doing that until something does happen. So hopefully that helped. Just a quick video. I know we didn't see any snakes. So let's check one out. Oh, this girl shed. So we'll check her out. This is the Batman, or the Batgirl, so there's a female. Possible red stripe. She is super feisty. She just shed. And she will try to bite the camera and me. But what a gorgeous snake she is. Cannot wait to add some chocolate leopard into her. And hopefully get a dark night in the future. So, see you guys. I appreciate the support. And I'll see you on the next video.